Hello students, greeting to you all. Hope you all are safe and doing good by God's grace. From last class, we started with a new unit, which is Unit 17, Animal Kingdom. And this is the continuation of that unit, which is part two video. So we'll move on to motivational quote for the week. Every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. I'll repeat it. Every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. With this quote, we quickly move on to today's class. The topics to be concentrated in this session are invertebrates and core data. Yes. So first we'll see what is invertebrates. What is an invertebrate? Majority of animals today on earth are invertebrates. Invertebrates don't have a backbone. They are usually smaller than vertebrates. All invertebrates are oviparous. Oviparous is nothing but animals which lay eggs. Okay, So some live on land and other live in the soil. Some live in water and some can fly. So these are some of invertebrates. Okay. So what do invertebrates eat? Not all invertebrates eat the same food. Some eat only plants, which is they are herbivorous. Some eat only other animals, then they are carnivorous. Some eat both plants as well as animals, then they are said to be omnivorous. So there are three types of in uh, type of invertebrates, which eat only plant is known as herbivorous which eat only other animals, they are known as carnivorous and which eat both plants and animals, they are known as omnivorous. Classifying invertebrates. It is more difficult to classify invertebrates because there are so many groups and the important groups are mentioned here. Under invertebrates, we are going to see these groups in today's class. So, we are going to see Porifera, Plathimanthus, Anilida, Mollusca, Silentata, Asylmanthus, Arthropoda, and Echinodermata. So, first we'll see Phylum Porifera. So, Phylum Porifera is nothing but they have multicellular, non motile aquatic organism. Multicellular is nothing but it is made up of many cells. And non motile aquatic organism is nothing but it does not move, it cannot move. Okay, and it exhibits cellular grade of organization. And uh, we're going to see the features of Porifera. Ostia, first one is Ostia, which is nothing but the number of pores formed all over the body wall. It is named to be Ostia. Then we are going to see the canal system, which is nothing but water enters the body through the ostia and canal system. It travels throughout the body, helps in carrying food and water. Speculus on the body wall forms the skeletal framework and reproduction is sexual and asexual reproduction. For example, eucalypta and psychon which we, we saw here, right? Eucalypta and Cycon. Next one is Phylum Coelentrita. Coelentritas are aquatic organism, mostly marine and freshwater forms. They are multicellular, radial symmetrical animals with tissue grade of organization. We know, right, multicellular means it is made up of many cells. Radially symmetrical means if we cut in any shape, it the shape remains the same. Okay, it is equally distributed. Okay, radially symmetrical. And we in last class, we saw two types of body wall. One is diploblastic animals and another one is triploblastic. Diploblastic is nothing but it has only two layers. So, under film cylindrator, the animals have two layers, which is diploblastic, okay? And outer and inner layer are separated by non-cellular jelly-like substance called mesoglia, which is nothing but hydrostatic fluid. The best example would be jellyfish. 
and the central gastro vascular cavity is celiac tracheon and mouth surrounded by short tentacles for example take this hydra okay and hydra as well as jellyfish uh, the mouth is surrounded by short tentacles right this is known as be tentacles and tentacles bearing stinging cells which is snodoblast or nematocyst except it exhibits polymorphism many forms okay it can exhibit many forms poly means many and morphism is any shape okay so many shapes it can exhibit and reproduction this is also both sexual and asexual reproduction the best example would be hydra and jellyfish next phylum we are going to see is platymenthes which is flat forms it is bilateral symmetrical and it is triploblastic it has three layers which is ectoderm endoderm as well as mesoderm next it is an acelomate animal it is parasite in nature and sucker and hooks helps in attachment on host excretion by flame cells and hermaphrodites have both male and female reproductive organs for the best example for this would be a tapeworm or a flatworm or liver fluke okay next we are going to see phylum aslimenthes or which is known to be nematoda which is round worms it is a bilaterally symmetrical so it it is it can be divided only into two equal halves okay and it is a type of triploblastic nematoda which has three layers and it is a pseudo filament free living soil form which is parasites and round body and pointed at both ends it is an unsegmented body covered by thin cuticle sexes are separate and it causes when when this type of round worms uh, it is very dangerous and it can cause aserias or elephantias which is nothing but this disease one leg getting into an elephant like this picture right so it can cause aserias or elephantiasis the best example would be ucheria next phylum we are going to see is phylum annelida it is known to be segmented worms so it is a bilaterally symmetrical and it is also a triploblastic which has three layers and first true filamentous animal it is an organ system is grade of organization metamers which is body is extended divided into segments and it is covered by moist thin cuticle and locomotor organ which is setae and paraphroid in and when it come to sex it may be separated or united if for example hermaphrodites and the best example would be earthworm or leech so earthworm or leech is the best example for phylum annelida which is segmented worms next phylum we are going to see is phylum orthopoda which is known to be animals with joint legs so orthopoda is the largest phylum of the animal kingdom they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and coelomate animals the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen each segment bears pad jointed legs so exoskeleton is made up of chitin and is shredded periodically as the animal grows the casting off and regrowing of exoskeleton is called molting okay and the body cavity is filled with hemolymphatic which is nothing but blood the blood does not flow in blood vessels and circulates throughout the body which is open circulatory system okay respiration is through body surface which is gills or trachea which is air tubes okay and excretion occurs by malpighian tubules or green glands sexes are separate the best example would be prawn cockroach crab millipedes centipedes spider scorpions and so on next phylum we are going to see is phylum mollusca Phylum Mollusca is known to be soft-bodied animals. So they are diversified groups of animals living in marine, freshwater, and terrestrial habitats. Body is bilaterally symmetrical, soft, and without segmentation. 
It is divided into head, muscular foot and visceral mass. The foot helps in locomotion. The entire body is covered with a fold of thin skin called mantle. Okay, and the entire body is covered with fold of thin skin called mantle, which secretes outer our cal calorious shell. Okay, and respiration is through gills, which is nothing but snetteria or lungs or both. Okay, and sexes are separate with larval stages during development. The example would be garden snail or this is the garden snail or octopus. Next phylum we are going to see is phylum Echinodermata, which is otherwise known to be spiny skinned animals. So they are exclusively free living marine animals. They, these are triploblastic and true coelomates with organ system grade of organization. Adult animals are radially symmetrical but larvae remain bilaterally symmetrical. A unique feature is the presence of fluid filled water vascular system and locomotion is affected by tube feet and body wall is covered with spiny hard calorious osses example starfish and sea urchin. The next phylum which is the last phylum we are going to see is phylum hemichordata. Hemichordatas are marine organisms with soft, vermiform and unsegmented body. They are bilaterally symmetrical, coelomate animals with non-chordata and chordata features. They have gill slits but do not have notochord. They are ciliary feeders and mostly remain as tubicular form. Example, baranoglus which is acorn forms. Okay, these are the acorn forms. Next, we are going into a new topic which is chordata. So, chordata are characterized by the presence of notochord, dorsal nerve cord, and pad gill pouches. First, what is chordata? It is derived from Greek word which is chord means a string or a cord, eta means bearing, so string bearing. Chordatas originated from fish-like ancestors. It is very similar to the larva which resemble the larval form stage of chordata organism. Primitive chordatas resembles the non-chordata and some resembles in some features and they are called prochordatas or invertebrate chordatas. The phylum chordata is a very diverse phylum which contains about 43,000 living species. Among them, most organisms belong to the subphylum vertebrata. It is the third largest phylum in the animal kingdom. So let's move on to the characteristic of phylum chordata. Fundamental chordata characteristics are the following. They are presence of the longitudinally supporting rod like notochord. So presence of the dorsal, halo and tubular nerve cord. Presence of pad, panagal, gill pouches or slits and presence of post anal tail. So we are going to briefly look out these four characteristics. One is the notochord, second one is the dorsal halo and tubular nerve cord, third one is the pad, fungal, gill pouches or slits and last one is post anal tail. So this is what the arrangement. It has notochord, dorsal halo nerve cord, fungal slits and post anal tail. So we are going to briefly look each characteristics. First one is notochord. Notochord is elongated. It is rod-like in shape. It is flexible, present beneath the nerve cord and it separates the gut and nervous tissue. Prime feature of the chordate thus. Okay, this is the notochord. And this is the nerve cord. And the blue thing is lateral neural cartilages. Next, we are going to see dorsal halo nerve cord. It is present in central nervous system, which is CNS. Okay, longitudinal hollow nerve tube present above the notochord. Next, we are going to see pharyngeal gill slits. 
It is paired lateral gill slits, pharyngeal wall of gut behind mouth, protocordatus which is present throughout life. In higher vertebrates, it disappears or modifies in adults. Next, the phylum chordata also contain the following characteristic features like all chordatas are triploblastic and coelomate animals. They have exoskeleton and cartilaginous or bony endoskeleton. They have a closed type of blood circulatory system with ventral heart, excretory system which is proto, meso and mentor nephric kidneys and they are bisexual. They are found in various environments. Some live in marine habitat, some in fresh water and others in terrestrial environments. Now we will see classification of chordata. On the basis of presence of notochord or vertebral column, presence or absence of cranium and it is divided into two groups which is prochordata and vertebrata. First, we'll see prochordata. So, this is the classification of phylum chordata. First, we'll see prochordata. So, the prochordata are considered as the forerunner of vertebrates. Prochordata is classified into two subphylum, which is subphylum urochordata and subphylum cephalochordata. First, we'll see urochordata, which is subphylum urochordata. Notochord present only in tail region of free living larval stage. Adults are sessile forms and mostly degenerate. The body is covered with a tunic or test, for example, acidian. So, this is an acidian plant. Okay. Next, we have subphylum cephalum chordata. So, cephalum chordata are small fish like marine chordata with unpaired dorsal fins. And the notochord extends throughout the entire length of the body. And the best example would be amphibosis. This is an amphibosis. Okay. Next classification of chordata is vertebrata. So what is vertebrata? This group is characterized by the presence of vertebral column or backbone. So, notochord in an embryonic stage get replaced by the vertebral column which forms the chief skeletal axis of the body. Vertebrata are grouped into six classes. So, now we are going to deal with those six classes in detail. First class is cyclostomata. Cyclostomates are jawless vertebrates which is mouth not bounded by jaws. Okay and body elongated like eel. They have circular mouth. See, they have circular mouth. Skin is slimy and scaleless. They are ectoparasites of fishes. Example, hagfish or lamprey. Okay. Next class we are going to see is pieces, which is fish. Aquatic vertebrates with jaw. Fishes are Poculothermic, which is cold blooded, and the streamlined body is divisible into head, trunk, and tail. Locomotion is by pad and median fins. Their body is covered by scales, and respiration is through gills. The art is two chambered with an auricle and a ventricle. And there are two main types of fishes. One is the cartilaginous fishes and another one is the bony fishes. Cartilaginous fishes is nothing but with skeleton made up of cartilages. Example, sharks, skates, etc. Whereas when it comes to bony fishes, it is with skeleton made up of bones. Example, carps, mullets and so on. Next class we are going to see is class amphibian. Amphi means both, bios means life, so both life. So these are the first four-legged tetrapods, vertebrates with dual adaptation to live in both land and water. So the body is divisible into head and trunk. Their skin is moist and have mucus gland. Respiration is through gills. 
lungs, skin, or buccopharynx. The art is tree chambered with two auricles and one ventricle. Eggs are laid in water and the tadpole larva transforms into an adult. So this is what uh, the tadpole turns into an adult frog. The best example for amphibian would be frog or tadpole. Okay, tadpole. The next class we are going to see is class reptilia. So repair means to crawl or creep. So the creeping creatures or crawling creatures comes under this class. These vertebrates are fully adapted to life on land. Their body is covered with horny epidermal scales. Respiration is through lungs. The heart is tree chambered with an exemption of crocodiles which have four chambered heart. Most of the reptiles lay the eggs with tough outer shell, example, carotus, lizard, snake, tortoise, or turtle. So next class we are going to see is class aves. Aves is nothing but birds. Birds are homeothermic, which is warm-blooded animals. Animals with several adaptations to fly. Okay, the spindle or boat-shaped body is divisible into head, neck, trunk, and tail. The body is covered with feathers, and four limbs are modified into wings for flight. Hind limbs are adapted for walking, perching, or swimming. And the respiration is through lungs, having has that. Bones are filled with air, which is pneumatic bones, which reduces the body weight. They lay large yolk laden eggs. They are covered by hard calo calcareous shell. For example, parrot, crow, eagle, pigeon, and ostrich. Next class, which is the final class, which is mammalia. Mammalia is nothing but mammary plant, mamma breast. Okay, and mammals are warm pledged animals the skin is covered with hairs it also bears sweat and sebaceous oil glands the body is divisible into head neck trunk and tail females have mammary glands which secrete milk for feeding the young ones the external ear of female is present heart is four chambered and two auricles and just two ventricles and the respiration is through lungs and uh, for female with mammary gland it helps to secrete milk to feed young ones and except egg laying mammals like platypus and spiny antia which is oviparous and all mammals give birth to their young ones which is known to be viviparous Placenta is a unique feature of mammals. The best example of class mammalia is rat, rabbit and man. And that's it for today's class my dear students. So let us quickly summarize what we learned in today's class. The majority of living animals are invertebrates. We saw in first in introduction itself, right? And invertebrates lack a backbone. They may have an incomplete or a complete digestive system and most invertebrates reproduce sexually. After hatching, many invertebrates pass through one or more larval stages that are different from the adult stage. And many important traits evolved in invertebrates. They include multicellularity, tissues and organs, radial and bilateral symmetry, mesoderm, complete digestive system, Coelom, segmented body, and notochord. Eight invertebrate phyla contain most invertebrate species. And I've just given in a tabular column which include phylum, notable characteristics, and example. We saw nearly eight to nine phylum, right? It is phylum Forifera, phylum Snidaria, phylum Platymanthus, phylum Nematoda, phylum Mollusca, phylum Annelida, phylum Arthropoda, and phylum Echinodermata. For that, the examples are also given. For phylum porifera, it is sponges. 
for phylum Cyraria, it is jellyfish for phylum platymenthes it is platform uh, for phylum nematura it is round worm for phylum mollusca it is snail for phylum annelida it is earthworm for phylum arthropoda it is insect which is, can be dragonfly or anything cockroaches um, and for phylum echinodermata it is sea urchin and we'll, let's identify the phylum here we are i have given you some images and you are going to identify its phylum let's take our understanding by our own okay so your yeah, first picture what phylum is this it is phylum data. yes what phylum is the starfish it is phylum echinogermata this one is a phylum cyclostomata this one is leech which is phylum anleda next it is a snail mollusca and this is arthropoda and this is an example for apes which is birds okay this is an example for fishes and this is the example for mammalia and this humans comes under the class mammalia yes that's it and for your follow-up work you're just going to do an activity here i've given you certain uh, few activity which is rearrange the following letters to form new word okay i've given you eight words so i've mentioned you the hint also okay so first one they are covered with spines and have tube feet so you need to rearrange this word to form the correct word so like that i've given you nearly eight questions so take down in your rough note take a picture of it and upload it in google classroom thank you so much students stay home and stay safe god bless you